everybody, Michael Crum. Good afternoon. Welcome to my Broadway talk. This is going to be weird with a microphone. I'm way too loud. OK, so Broadway is a concurrent multi-stage tool for building data ingestion and data processing pipelines. So specifically, this talk is about how to increase pipeline efficiency by using batchers and the handle batch for callback. If you don't know what any of those words mean, that's OK. But buckle up, because we're going to go fast. So hi, I'm Michael Crum. I'm an uh, Elixir engineer at Dockyard. I'm the author and maintainer of the Google Cloud PubSub connector for Broadway. So, so Broadway ingests messages. And those are messages that originate remotely. Um, I mentioned Google Cloud. There are official adapters for Let me move the mouse there, too. Um, there are also official adapters or connectors for Apache Kafka, Amazon SQS, RabbitMQ, and uh, a few others out there in the wild. So in fact, any gen stage producer can be a Broadway producer, as Broadway is built on top of gen stage. So last fall, I wrote an article about batch operations. Uh, you can find it on the Dockyard site. And it was also about a pizza shop. So keeping with the, the pizza theme, this is, my, this is my elevator pitch for Lone Star Elixir 2020. Uh, so that's, that's just a picture of a freight container. But a, a pizza box container would have like, you know, like a kiosk up front and maybe like a carport in the back, quadcopter landing pad on top. I don't know. Um, and I thought, you know, may maybe, maybe, but it turns out Turns out someone has already wasted millions and millions of dollars on a worse version of this. <laughs> so, so we move on. And uh, so today we're gonna we're going to act as the franchise payments team for Pizza Box, and our role, you see what I'm doing here? Our role will be to ingest these uh, these very stripy event charges, uh, or charge events rather, and and insert them into our database. So. Each franchisee for, for Pizza Box gets its own DB prefix, and we'll need to take that into account when we're uh, creating these charges. So without further ado, let's dive in. OK, so to use Broadway, you can use Broadway. And we'll add a, a start link function, which will be called by default when you add your, add your pipeline to a supervision tree. So we, we invoke broadway.startlink with the pipeline module the name of this particular pipeline process. And then we will add a producer definition. So this is my custom producer, the, the backstage event producer. Uh, it emits events equal to the demand, and will do so forever. Um, it is it's purely for example purposes here. This is a place where, in practice, you would use whatever adapter works for, for your environment, whether that's, again, Cloud Pub Sub, SQS, or, or something custom. So then finally, for, for this stage, we will, we will configure the processors. Um, so this can be a little bit confusing, given that the, the definition takes a list, but Broadway will only allow you to, uh, to define one pool of processor, like one processor's pool. Um, so we'll do, we do that here, and we'll, we'll name it default. So processors are the first stage in the Broadway pipeline. They're the first opportunity you have to interact with the message that you receive. So to do that, we're going to add a few aliases. We're going to alias broadway.message, which is the, the data structure that will contain your data. And we're going to add our, our payments context. And then we're going to define our handle message three callback. So handle message three receives the name of the processor stage, the message itself, and an optional context. And we're going to go about inserting our first charge. So let's just take this step by step. We're going to unpack the, the actual charge data from that monstrosity of JSON and the message itself that we got earlier. We'll pop the franchise from that list of charge attributes and use that for the BB prefix. Then we'll create the charge. And if it's successful, we just return the message. Broadway will handle acknowledgments for you. If you're familiar with any of these queues, SQS or PubSub, you need to acknowledge the message when you're done with it. Um, and if it's, you know, in the case of an error, we'll fail the message by invoking message.failed with the message and the, and the error reason. Um, the behavior of, of what happens to a failed message is entirely dependent on your connector. So, PubSub, Google Cloud PubSub will continue to retry that message up to some arbitrary expiration point uh, 
at, you know, but at, after which point you will have already received it you know, over and over again, every 10 seconds or so by default until you acknowledge it. Uh, SQS has a little bit more functionality there to be able to you know, set up dead letter queues and do some other things like that. So look at your connector documentation for, for more information about specifically what happens there. Uh, but independent of the connector, failed messages, you, you also have another opportunity to work with failed messages in the handle failed callback, which you can read more about in the docs. Okay, so who likes charts and graphs? Yeah, okay. So I've been building the uh, Phoenix telemetry dashboard and it's still pretty rough, but let's check it out. Oh, that's no fun. Nope. My apologies, just a moment. There, that's better. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the, the live dashboard. It is instrumenting a chart for a custom metric that I wrote to pull Ecto, or the, the DB specifically, to pull charge totals back, or the, the number of charge records per franchise. So right now we're doing about, eh, I don't know, it's about 100 records per second. This is polling every two seconds. About 100 records per second per franchise. It's about 800 records a second. That's okay. It's all right. So, okay, so it's working. Great. Neat. So, all right, so with, with just the implementation of the required callback, you know, handle message three, we, you know, our pipeline is, is pretty okay. Like 800 messages a second, you, could probably be done there and that would be fine. But uh, we're, we want to get past okay, but to get past okay, we need to, we need to reach beyond the required. And we need to dive into the optional. So let's take a look at what this would look like with a, with a handle batch for callback. Uh, first step, we need to, we're gonna alias the batch info struct, which is going to contain information about our batch when we receive it. And we're gonna add a definition for our batcher stage, which is we're gonna give a name uh, called charges. So unlike the processor stage, Batch or any pipeline can have multiple batcher stages and messages are routed to a particular batcher when they're processed in the handle message three callback. So just in case you missed that, handle message three first, handle batch four second. That seems to be a, a point of confusion sometimes. It certainly was for me. Um, so our first step towards batchers, once we have our configuration in place, is to modify our handle message three callback. So <laughs> We'll, we'll just modify the example we had before. So instead of creating the charge, we'll build a charge entry. And a charge entry is simply a map of attributes that we'll use to call, uh, with Ecto to call repo.insert all three as opposed to insert two. Uh, but unlike insert two, auto-generated fields aren't populated for you. So one thing you have to take into account is if, you're, if Ecto's auto-generating your IDs or auto-generating your timestamps or any of these sorts of things, you need to account for that yourself. Get those attributes into the map uh, for, for an insert all three call. So once we get back a successful entry, we will update the data in the message. We do that through this update data callback, which receives the current data, and you return the new data. Um, after having done that, we will, we will set the batcher that we want to handle this particular message, and we'll do that with the put batcher function. We'll set this to the, the name of the batcher stage that we defined in our, in our start link function. So finally, and, and most importantly for this example, is we're gonna set a batch key. Uh, batch key is a term, and it is used to group messages within your batcher stage. So the docs word it effectively that messages will be grouped per batcher, or per batch key, per batcher, up to batch size, which is another, you can set the, the size of your batches. So, so we'll group these by the prefix so that we can insert them by the prefix, and we'll fail the message as usual if it, if it fails at that stage. So, okay, so there's the updated handle message three function. All right, finally, here we are. Handle batch four. Handle batch four receives the batcher name, the list of messages, which is the batch, the batch info struct, which is gonna have the metadata uh, that we need, in this case, just the prefix is what we care about, and then again, the optional context. So, to handle the batch, now, those who've heard me talk about this, this talk for many, many days know that I struggled very much with this slide. So if you don't like the code here, I don't either. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, 
so we're gonna we're gonna insert and get all the charge IDs, and we're gonna we're gonna run an insert all to do that. We're gonna return just the IDs of those, and then we're going to fail the messages that we didn't insert. Uh, and that basically looks like this. So we're going to unpack the data from the messages again, insert and get all the entries, unpack the you know map those to just their IDs, and to fail the messages, we'll split based on you know the ones that aren't there the IDs that aren't there, and then return both the good and the bad messages that have now been failed. So important to note here that in your, it, whether it's handle message, which only gets the one, or handle batch, which gets a list of them, in all cases, return all the messages that you get. So Broadway wants them all back. Okay, let's take a look. There we go. All right. <laughs> so, okay. That looks significantly better. Um, after after initial relatively large jump, we're we're now seeing around about if I kill it it's easier to see, but we'll, uh, we're about about 1500 messages every 2 seconds, so about and that's per per franchise. So, around around 750 messages a second somewhere around there. So, not too shabby, quite an improvement. And that's and I would I would consider that more than more than okay. I think we're at more than okay. So, I'm, you know, I'm relatively happy with this. I'm just going to leave that there cuz I'm tired of fussing with the window. So, okay. So, have I convinced you to use batchers yet? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Would you believe me if I told you we could do better? Well, fantastic, because we can. <laughs> okay, so each stage in your Broadway pipeline can be tuned independently, uh, concurrency as well as you know the the amount of messages being handled at any given time. So it's important to note here that this is not tuned. This is just more. I just want to just be very clear about that. Um, so this is not tuned. This is just more. This is uh, by default. I think min and max demand are like five and ten. Um, so we're, we're substantially increasing that. And then we're going to run four batcher processes. They're going to expect batches of size 500. And if they don't have 500 within the timeout of one second, they'll deliver whatever they have. All right, here we go. Oh, right, because that's it. That's act three. Whoops, no, stop it. Okay. Give it a second to reconnect here, and there. Okay. Awesome. So once again, fairly large improvement over what we were doing before. Um, hard number wise, I think this is. It ends up sitting around. And again, I have. There's, there's literally no tuning here. Did I mention this is Docker or uh, Postgres in a Docker container? Um, so we're, you know. 56,000 to 59, you know, so it's about, we're, we're, we, we've about doubled, we, we about doubled our, our, our throughput there. So about 1,500 messages a second at this point. And, and that's where I'll leave it. So this is a yeah, rough, quick look at, at some of the things that are coming from, from the dashboard side of things. And um, I hope that this talk was at least Gave you a view into why we should move past just what's required and, uh, and take a look into, into the additional features of Broadway and the pipelines. So I have to thank Dockyard. Um, they, they, you know, I've, I, I, like I said before, I work at Dockyard. I, uh, they pay for me to be here and uh, give me time to work on all these awesome open source projects. And, you know, it's just such a great place to be. And I'm so happy to be able to get up here and talk to you all about these awesome, awesome things. So if you're looking for training, you know, Elixir, uh, live view, all things Broadway, what have you, come talk to us. All right, thanks so much.